Hello soil lovers, Regen Ray here. Have you heard of syntropic farming? Well, it's been around for a long time. Some people call it companion planting, but it's about creating an ecosystem where all the plants are working together in order for their entire success. And this has been lost a lot. Now that we've gone to like very systematic type of farming, everything's kind of monoculture and we have rows and rows of the same uh, food or crop or fiber being grown um, for simplicity and so that way tractors and machinery and humans eyes can you know see straight lines and 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 create order out of something that nature always intended to be a little bit disorderly so hugo is going to share a little bit about how he germinates seeds and also is planning a very small scale syntropic farming and talking about the fact that some of the pots that and and areas of growing have lots of weeds and you'll see some of it behind me but this is all capturing the energy of the planet through the sun photosynthesis and actually putting nutrients down into the soil for the fungi and the bacteria to really thrive and he talks about the importance of not keeping you know this whole weed mentality to take weeds out that it's actually causing pain to the plant but really it's there supporting the life under the soil so we're gonna hop into the back garden and we're going to talk a little bit about germinating seeds so uh this is a goodie so stick around to the end hello i'm hugo disler from farming secrets uh, today i want to have a bit of a chat with you as to uh, what i'm doing here which is setting up another uh, uh, device another area thing for planting things in a syntropic way and I may, I may cover that later but right to start off with to get the seeds I'm growing uh, pea seeds and what I've done is something my mother taught me was to actually grow them on a wick and uh, these have been fed spring water not our chlorinated water and I have I put water down there and let it wick up and this wicks up there now the interesting thing too Ray I also I uh, planted some rye corn, rye, and it hasn't taken off. It hasn't sprouted. And also planted some, I've uh, grown some uh, buckwheat, and it hasn't taken off. Now the reason it hasn't taken off could be one, the seed is dead. It's past its use by date. That's kind, I think that's quite extraordinary for seed to be past its date. It's been stored as well as you would expect seed to be stored. So I would say that um, the conditions weren't right, either the temperature was right, and we'll talk about the cosmic influence on plants, because plants certainly respond to cosmic influences, which we'll talk about later. Now the interesting thing here is, the interesting thing about this, and talk about uh, how seeds had to respond, uh, up in the Atherton, Atherton Tablelands, when we're selling a, a fish and seaweed product we call Combo, a farmer would spray that out five litres to the hectare. And what he found, two, two, th two interesting things he found. One was his stock no longer suffered from what they used to call, what they call up there, 24 hour sickness in these cattle, where the cattle would just lie down for a um, whole day motionless because they were crook from grass or whatever else. He was using synthetic fertilizers then. He's, when he's moved over to the uh, uh, fish and seaweed combo product, uh, what he found, two, th two things. One, his 24-hour sickness disappeared. And secondly, uh, to much love of the local uh, agri uh, DPI fellow, Department of Agriculture fellow, he, he, they, a legume appeared that the DPI guy hadn't seen for decades. And he looked it up in his book and it took him quite some time to find it. And it was a, some ancient, fairly ancient uh, legume that had appeared. And why I'm saying that is that um, when plants receive the right nutrients, then they will respond. So maybe these plants here did not get the right nutrients. If I used vermicompost tea or a very, very weak fish seaweed uh, product, very weak, they may have responded. And on the same article, on the same basis, uh, a, a very big Western Australian farmer who's planted uh, his cereal crop uh, with uh, a vermicompost tea, a very special high quality one. In the rows where that was planted, uh, native grass appeared in the very rows that the cereal crop was planted in. So the cereal crop was harvested and had a 
uh, rows of uh, native grasses which hadn't been seen in that area for who knows how long. In fact, farmers believe there's no native grasses in that area. What the two points I'm illustrating in Cairns and in Western Australia, that when the seed gets the right conditions, it will respond. So the chances are that this seed did not get its right conditions. Now the other interesting thing too, Ray, is that you can make this mistake easily. <laughs> it's very easy to see it here, which is the root and which is the uh, leaf. It's uh, you, what you don't want to do when you're sprouting them, plant them upside down, because that's a root that's going to show up first and then the, then the grow seed. These advanced, they should have been planted out two days ago. And the other interesting thing what I will be doing is I'll be planting them in toilet rolls. Well, I'll put the high quality seed raising mix in there and I'll plant them, I'll test them with a, I think I will plant them in the shorter toilet rolls and I'll plant them directly in the ground so I can monitor where they are and I can grow them. So Ray, what I'm also going to be doing here is setting up a syntropic garden, like, somewhat like we've done in the park over there. We've got still got um, uh, silver beet growing. We pick those leaves uh, pretty well every few days. They get picked, and as you can see, there's still leaves growing, and there's food there for us to put in our salad. Hi, Ray. Please excuse the noise of the chainsaw in the background. We live in a rainforest area and just over the weekend in the storm a tree fell down the neighbour's place well finally he's got someone to help him out after work obviously now Ray getting back to business uh, here I'm setting up a syntropic uh, vegetable spot and what you see here is this is going to be straight on the ground and uh, for the reason of being straight in the ground, we, I want the material what's going in there, which is going to be vermicompost and compost and soil, to have a connection to the ground. I don't want to be in pots like the other things are in pots, because we really we want a connection to the ground. And this is where people, it's a bit dubious whether raised beds with a weed control mat underneath it or something like that or wick beds uh, whether how good they are they are good but as it's been said it's the, the life of the soil tr uh, transfers from inside your bed as well as going out outside your bed the, the, the plants are actually connected to the soil and to the outside environment now here, Ray, what we'll be doing is growing two tomato plants. And when you look at these tomato plants, both are at the same age. Just a matter of interest, you'll see that's blooming. And the reason why that is blooming, because what happens to a plant when it's under stress, it straight away goes into reproductive mode. And, uh, but that will grow out of that. But in this, in this uh, syntropic garden, which I'm going to grow, and, and I'll start this afternoon, is... Um, I will plant beetroot, and plant about eight beetroots because that's enough to keep us going for a fortnight. They'll be on the inner thing, radish will be on the outside, and I'll also plant two sweet corn. And I will plant them in the toilet rolls to make sure they grow, and I will have some backup in the to little toilet rolls, so if they don't grow, I've got, I can back up. Now Ray, what I'd like to do now is go down to the other end and uh, have a, a very brief chat about uh, how we are connected to the universe and, and what I'm doing down there. And um, Ray, I'll just show you this. This is a book written by uh, Rudolf Stein himself and it's about uh, a bloke, a chap called Goethe. Now Goethe worked out that everything in the in the world is connected, when it is connected to the universe. And when you look at the word universe, look it up in the dictionary, it's a Latin word for uni, one verse, that we are all connected. Earth and nature is connected to the universe. And what's, what uh, Goethe, uh, it's Goethe and spelled G-O-E-T-H-E, what Goethe worked out, together with the scientists in, in the Italy, that um, plants were connected to the universe and not just a survival of the fittest. In fact, uh, he's written, wrote many papers on that, but not, not a book. So Steiner wrote a book about Goethe. And it's far different to Darwin's theory, which uh, is survival of the fittest. It's not about survival of the fittest. What Goethe made it quite clear, it's the cosmic influences that created a lot of the plant formations, a lot of the plant behaviors, rather than survival of the fittest. So we'll just, Go down to the other end. Now here we have planted 
sugar snap peas which eat the pods and all and we plant them mainly well for friends and our grandchildren because they love eating uh, these peas they, when they have peas at home they don't sort of like eating them they like to pick them and eat them now you also will see there's a silver beet growing it doesn't worry us it doesn't worry me because we could keep picking those leaves and put them in the salad the other thing that doesn't worry me ray is that weeds well i don't particularly want a blackberry here but when you see weeds here what they actually are doing they are not competing with the plant as you see these, these plants are doing quite well they are actually conducting energy from the atmosphere into the soil so the more energy you get conducting from the atmosphere into the soil via exudates that is the that is the material departing from the hair roots of the plant and that exudate is what the soil life wants so the more exudates you create the more variety you create the, the better things are and this is, gets back to syntropic farming it's been going for about 30 odd years it's been proven in brazil to be a, a commercial success and they predict that it's going to be the new way of farming or growing food all right, soil lovers. Well, that's another video from us at The Patch, Farming Secrets HQ. I really hope that you've enjoyed uh, this, this video. We've got lots of videos like this on our Soil Learning Center. There'll be links always around the videos, but if you head over to soillearningcenter.com, that is our learning hub with years and years of videos and interviews, and even now the latest podcast, Secrets of the Soils, all the videos are loaded there for you to continually dig deeper and learn more about how our source functions. I hope any of the videos that you watch from Farming Secrets really sparks that interest so that way you start thinking, I really want to know how the soil beneath my feet can actually heal the planet, reverse so many of the broken systems and also grow nutrient dense food. It's literally a win, 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 win for everything above the ground if we just start nurturing the stuff below the ground. So with that, I really hope that we're inspiring you to really leave our soils better today than what they were yesterday. And with that, I'll let you head over to the Soil Learning Center where you can keep digging deeper and getting your hands dirty and really understanding the wonderful world of our soil. Regen Ray for Farming Secrets.